Today we are going to model the structure of DNA and how it replicates. Here is what you will need, so please gather these supplies. For the first step, please fold one of the sheets of construction paper in half. Then fold it in half again, and after that repeat to fold in a half one more time. Open it up and cut off two strips from the side. Those two strips are going to be your sugar phosphate backbone eventually, but we're going to work on our nitrogenous bases next. To do this, I want you to stack four sheets of a different color, like all four need to be a different color than the original color, on top of each other. Then what you're going to do is when they're aligned real nice, you're going to take one of the strips that you had just cut out for your sugar phosphate backbone and you're going to place it on the far end of your stack of the four new colored sheets of paper. Then fold those colored sheets over top. So you basically you want to have a fold where you show all four sheets folded over so you can cut along that line and get four of the equal size strips but of four different colors. Then when you have those four different strips you're going to stack them on top of each other and fold them in half. Then fold them in half yet another time and you're going to cut at your fold. Then simply label each color one particular letter representing one particular nitrogenous base. So like in my example, my yellow is A for adenine, my green is T for thymine, my orange is C for cetazine, and my, G, uh, sorry, my blue is G for guanine. Then take your original long strip and repeat that whole process to make another set of all the nitrogenous bases, but those bases set aside for later. Next, you're going to want to take the two long strips of the same color, put one on the left, one on the right, and then in the middle, you want to arrange base pairs so that way it, it doesn't matter how you arrange them as long as there's always an A to a T or a T to an A as well as a C to a G or a G to a C. So basically you just want to set it up to see how it will look and kind of spread it out in a way that it will look like a nice little ladder. Then take long strips of clear tape and use one on the left side, one on the right side, and one in the middle to tape everything in place. Then on the outer sides, you want to make horizontal lines coming out from each of those bases, the A's, T's, C's, and G's, that go towards those long, uh, the long strips you put on the left and the right, in my case, pink, and you're going to want to write an S at the end of each of those lines, a big S, and that's standing for a sugar, and because we're creating DNA here today, that's going to be representing the deoxyribose sugar. Now, it's a sugar phosphate backbone, so we're going to have to add our phosphate groups next. To do this, basically you want to put a P with a circle around it in between but on the farthest side to the outside um, between each of the S's. And then you're going to put an angled line from each S up to the P where it's almost like if you were to be making triangles, they would be pointing outward on either side of either strand. But basically you'll see with the way I did it, you've got the sugar phosphate repeating. Now the one thing that you have to be careful with though is the strands are anti-parallel. Therefore, like in mine, my top left strand, it starts with a phosphate group and the bottom ends with a sugar. But if you compare it to the right side, it's the complete opposite. You need to make sure you do this because the strands are anti-parallel. So on the either corner, they'll end in a phosphate group, whereas the opposite corners of either side will end in a sugar. Next, flip your model over and tape the other side, because just the way this model works out, there's going to be some sticky parts, which we want to get rid of. And then flip it to the correct side again, the starting side, and what you need to do now is you need to add hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds are what hold the bases together in the middle of DNA. But you have to be careful because the number of those varies. Between A's and T's or T's to A, there needs to be two sets of dotted lines. But between C's and G's or G's and C's, there needs to be three sets of dotted lines or hydrogen bonds. So at this point, you have now successfully created a small scale model of a segment of DNA. Now granted, you're just seeing a ladder version 
which this thing gets twisted around to turn into a double helix. But because the size of this isn't too large, it's not going to bend real well into a double helix. But what we can do really well with this version of a model is we can now move on to a next step where we demonstrate replication. So at this point, we've created the, the ladder and we've created the model, but now we want to demonstrate how it replicates. To do this, you're going to take a different colored piece of construction paper and cut out a small triangle. You're going to label that DNA helicase because it's an enzyme, ASC, it ends in ASC, so it's an enzyme, that opens up the DNA double helix. Helicase, it unzips DNA for DNA to make a copy of itself. So you're going to actually cut up through your model down the middle where the hydrogen bonds were all the way up to the top, but try to leave at least the top set of base pairs intact so then you have something to work with. Um, and then you're going to tape the helicase triangle. I made a triangle because it'll fit right nice in there to demonstrate the unzipping. And that'll show that either side is now opened up. This is an origin of replication, and it looks like a fork. So we can call this location, the, yeah, it's not just the origin, but you see it forms a replication fork. Here's where those other bases you made earlier and set aside come to play a role. You're simply going to tape them in on the sides that are opened up, the open up sections. So because we didn't go all the way up to the top, you're going to have a couple left over. But anywhere you see a T, you connect an A. Anywhere you see an A, you connect a T. Anywhere you see a C, you connect a G. Anywhere you see a G, you connect a C. Then take that piece of construction paper that you had folded at the very beginning for the long strips that would be the sugar phosphate backbone and cut out two more. And basically what you're going to want to do is cut out that triangle helicase that you have in your model, cut the rest away up through the hydrogen bonds, through that top one that you didn't before, tape in the new base pairs, and then tape in the two new sides, because the reality is there's an enzyme called DNA polymerase that's bringing in those new bases based on the base pair rules, but they're also bringing in a sugar and a phosphate. So the whole point here is you want to make two identical models from your original model. As that's what DNA replication means. It means replicating or copying itself. Now when you take a look, I've now added some labels. And I want to point out that every time DNA replicates itself, it follows what we describe as a semi-conservative model of replication. And that's because what you see how I've labeled old, if you remember, that left, far left, and far right parts of these two new models were really from the original DNA we first constructed. And so literally every time DNA copies itself, the quote-unquote two new copies are really half old, half new, where the outermost one is from the original molecule that it came from, and the innermost at least in the, the way we're showing these pictures, right? So on the left one, the new one's on the right side. On the left picture, I mean on the right picture, the new one's on the left side because that's where we were envisioning DNA polymerase coming in and bringing in the new nucleotides, the new sugar, um, nitrogenous base, and phosphate group. Initially we put in the just the base pairs, but please understand that every time an A or a T or a C or a G was brought in, the associated sugar and phosphate group, when we had those straight lines, the covalent bonds, they were added in there um, as well. Before we wrap up, I just want to point out, I did put some five primed and three primed labels on here, which may or may not mean much to you at this point in this particular moment, but it probably will later when you study replication in more detail with something called the leading strand and the lagging strand. But if you take a look, the one thing you can definitely know right now we had you intentionally make sure each end was either a phosphate group and then the opposite, a sugar, the sugar deoxyribose, since this is DNA. Um, now, this video is not going into why each end is either five primed or three primed, but at the very bare minimum, hopefully throughout this process, you have definitely learned that DNA strands, because it's a double-stranded molecule, it's something called a double helix, the strands are anti-parallel to each other. Hope you enjoyed this. Construction paper biology. 
Like, share, subscribe, oh, won't you please? Thanks.